Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This year we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of your favorite TV show. Once again, we have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We support them to become more productive, get better yields, and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore what we eat, where we get it, and how we can cook it in cleaner, faster, healthier, and cheaper ways. And at the same time, increase family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Dear viewers, we'd like to let you know that all the filming you're about to see was done before the outbreak of the coronavirus in Kenya and Tanzania. Welcome to Shamba Shepa. Today we are visiting a farmer who has so much energy, like the Nabuyole Falls. And we are going to bottle it up and sell it by the roadside. The farmer is doing great, but he wants to do better. And we are going to help him do just that. If we will not have bottled him up and sold him by the roadside and made a fortune. Mm -hmm. Let's go. All right. Today we are visiting Nelson. He's a bishop in Sinoko village, Bungoma. And he's also an excellent husband, an active father, and a busy farmer too. Nelson is married to Sarah, and they have six children. This is Valentino. He's still at school, and also full of energy. Looks like he wants to combine his schoolwork with raising chickens when he gets a bit older. Hello! Ah, hello! Hi. Ah, yes, sir. Hello. Ah, welcome, welcome. Finally. Happy to nice. see you. Happy to see you. Pleasure Hi. meeting you. Hi. Thank you so much. How are you? Welcome home. Show us your shamba. Oh, yes. We can go. Cool. All right. Is this way? Yes. yes this All right. right. Proceed. Bishop Nelson and Sarah have a farm of four and a half acres. Their main crop is maize, but they also have orange fleshed sweet potatoes, bananas, boma roads, napier grass, pine trees, and gravelia trees. Wow. Nice. Wow. Excellent. Now, let's get to business. Yeah. In every shamba, there must be maybe a few challenges here and there. Yeah, on sweet potatoes last year, we did 10 acres and we were able to make 50,000 in every acre. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would like to improve and make uh, more profit. So what's your advice on that? Uh -huh. yeah. Good, good. And you, Sarah? Yeah, me, I really, really love trees in my home because uh, so many people are building, actually. Mm -hmm. The demand is so high. Mm -hmm. So when I go into trees, I believe I'm going to have a lot of market for that. And you're in luck because we've got an expert to do just that. Oh, That's thank perfect. you. That's right. yes. I'm happy about we'll, we'll it. Appreciate. Thank you. We'll appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So, no time to waste. Come on, Tony. We better get working. So, our first expert today is Kennedy Sorori, an agricultural extension officer for Pungoma County, here to represent the International Potato Center. Now, now, tell me, why do you recommend orange fleshed sweet potatoes? Because of its high nutritive value, mm -hmm. especially vitamin A. Yes. Yeah, and then it's early maturing and high yielding. Ah, for a farmer to get full benefits of orange fleshed sweet potatoes, what should a farmer do? First, the planting material, very important. You must get from a certified source. Mm -hmm. Secondly, good agronomical practices in the field. Yes. Very important. And lastly, good harvesting methods. Ah, harvesting methods. Yes. Well, I can see our farmer is there waiting for us. Okay. All yeah. right, let's go. Yeah. Kennedy has come to help Bishop Nelson with his orange flesh sweet potatoes. Last year, the potato crop was low. Poor harvesting methods can result in losing over half the value of your potato crop. Now, Kennedy, they're using the hole, like you said, and I can see Madame is using a metal stick or something. Now, t tell me, why are you using these implements? Yeah, actually, this is uh, uh, what we, we all know. Because actually, when we grew up, we used to see our parents. My father used the djembe and my mom used the the stick too. And that's the system we are using in your last That's house. the system 
we use last harvest. So what happened? Did you get any losses? Of course, that was 80% uh, loss. Using sticks and a hoe to harvest potatoes can cause a lot of damage to the potatoes. They are cut and they have holes, and they don't last and fetch a much reduced price at the market. Kennedy wants to show our farmer a much better system, and one that will make him more money in the long run. First, the farmer should, should come in when the potatoes are mature. And for the orange fleshed uh, sweet potato, they mature between four to five months. Yes. So at that time, uh, the farmer will see the yellowing of the lower leaves and he'll know that the potatoes are ready. Mm -hmm. Now at that stage, mm -hmm. the farmer should come in with a panga to cut off the vines mm -hmm. up to around 15 centimeters. Mm -hmm. Why, why does the farmer cut the vines off? This is a process of trying to harden the potatoes that are underground, mm -hmm. to harden the skin mm -hmm. so that they can stay long on the market. So it's like a healing process. It's a healing it? process mm -hmm. and the, it's, we call it dehumiling. You cut the vines and you leave the chamber like this? Yes. For how long? Four to seven days. And then? Then now you come in with the oxen plow to do the harvesting of the root, the roots. An oxen plow? Yes. Where are we going to get an oxen plow from at this sure, time? Sure. Oh, I know. I can do some magic and create one. You want to see it? Ta-da. Why, why the oxen plow? One, the oxen plow will have minimal bruising of the tupas. So you can't spot any bruises? No, I cannot. Okay. John! Minimal. Can you give us one? We have a look. Bring, 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 bro. Yes. You can see the hole. All of it mm. is out. Wow. Yes, from the tip to the end. And without this... bruises at all. And this is good quality? On the market, it's good quality. Can you, comp sure. can you compare this with the one you had before? This is a brilliant idea, sir. <laughs> Why have you not been doing this? <laughs> you wanted <laughs> to do traditional. Last year I had a big loss, 80%, man. Mm -hmm. And you have this uh, wonderful knowledge. Within a very short time, mm -hmm. and we already harvested almost uh, four or five rows within five minutes. Mm. Yes. One team of oxen plow can harvest for you not less than an acre in a day. We, we expect a farmer to get up to... 40 tons per acre. You can look look at that. Mm. Already there are so many of them there. Yeah. Wow. In those few minutes. Our second expert today is Ochako from Coopers. Nelson is keeping dairy cows, but his milk yield is low. Let's see if it can be improved. So, Bishop Nelson, yes. how many cows do you have here? Uh, right here I have four. And how much milk do they produce? Uh, uh, like 10 liters if I feed them well. 10 liters is not enough. Bishop Nelson, yes. what do you feed your cows? Mm, I feed them a boma root, this is the grass. Mm -hmm. Then I feed them napier. He's trying, but he has not achieved what we need in He's terms trying. of nutrition. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what, what should he do yeah. to achieve now, his goal? Keep in mind, yes. what kind of cow are you feeding this feed? I'm seeing a rocco breed. As much as you feed a rocco breed, mm. it cannot give you more than what it is supposed to give. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about how to improve these cows yeah. to become animals which can be able to be more productive. So you mean I can improve on this? You can improve on this. That's nice. This is a catalog. Wow. The first page is giving us what we are likely to get more than what we are getting from the rocco breeds. The problem here is that however much feed Bishop Nelson gives his cows, they will never produce extra milk as the cows are not a good milking breed. So, in order to boost his milk yield, Bishop Nelson needs to breed cows with big, strong udders. To achieve this, Ochako recommends using artificial insemination or AI, choosing bull semen from Cooper's CRV catalog. AI lets you choose the right bull to improve your cows. In only six generations, you can get pedigree cows and a high value herd. But for this to work, the cows must be healthy and properly managed. I've observed several things here that we're going to see. I want you to have a look at the skin. 
Yes. It's the root, yeah, there is fur coming out. Yes. So that is a symptom showing that the animal has worms. Ah. Secondly, the skin is not so smooth. Mm -hmm. That means equally the mineral supplements, they are not enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have to up on that. Mm -hmm. Then thirdly, just try to count the ribs of this animal. How, mm -hmm. how many are you saying, Bishop? The number of ribs? About five, see? Five. They are around five. That mm -hmm. is bad. Mm -hmm. How many should they be? They should not be able to see more than three. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is there a solution to all this? Yeah. We have Nielsen Plus. Mm -hmm. Nielsen Plus, when you use it, mm -hmm. you give the dosage half the weight of the cow. Yeah. So, let's say, for example, the cow is 20 kgs. Mm -hmm. you, you, don't, you don't assume. Uh -huh. You have to take the weight. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I like this. You so, have... we, use, we use a tape measure. Yeah, this is not a tape measure uh -huh. size. Uh -huh. This is, is a weigh band. Uh -huh. uh, a weigh band is a measure that is going to give us the weight of the cow. All right. And this is how we do it. So you pass it through over the gate, kindly. That's great. Yes, like now, the reading I'm, I'm having is 264 kgs. Okay. Now, if you want to administer Nielsen Plus, yes. which is this one, yes. you do a half the weight of the cow. We have got 264 kgs divided by two. Yes. That is one, 32 mils. Yes. 132 mils is what enough to deworm this cow. We have never, ever, like the veterinarians who've been coming in, yes. the highest they've given is 100 ml. Now you see, that is why we are seeing the body skin is so rough, mm -hmm. and even the animal is, is, is equally dull. Look at these bones. Mm -hmm. That means the body score is very poor, mm -hmm. and we have to improve in terms of feeding. feeding. I, I want to appreciate that you have very nice fodder. This yes. is fodder from yes. uh, Bomarot, Bomaro, yes, which is a very good source mm -hmm. of energy and the proteins. Yes, but. The way it is being served here is not so impressive. If you want to smell, mm. it has a particular stench. Mm. Mm. So we need to feed the cow at the right place. Mm. This is because actually it is being rained on. Mm. Yeah. And that is why we are advising that you should be able to do it mm. in a zero grazing unit. Okay. Yes. Nelson is giving his cows quality fodder, but it's being ruined by the rain. The cows need a shelter for their food and for themselves too. If Nelson practices zero grazing, he can build their strength and boost their milk yield because then he can start targeted feeding by adding supplements and minerals to the fodder. So, make sure your cows are in a controlled environment. Practice zero grazing. Why? Because with that you're able to observe your cows, that's one. They're able to feed properly. You're able to maintain hygiene, which is very important for our cows. If you need your cows to give you maximum yield, you need to take extra good care of them. Oh, Tony. So, what do you think of that? Going on great. But there's still plenty to be done on this chamber, though. Mm -hmm. Well, coming up after the break, making more money from trees. And what to do if a major disaster strikes. First, the desert locust is a very serious pest and can destroy your crops. Locust adults can eat their own weight every day. There are three groups of locusts you should look out for. The young locust is black and cannot fly. They move in big groups called bands, like this. The mature locusts are red and look like this. The mature locusts are yellow and look like this. These are the areas that are currently affected by the desert locust in Kenya. High density areas in red show where lots of locusts have been reported. So there is a high risk of the pest damaging crops badly now. Medium density areas in orange show where locusts have been reported and there is some risk of locusts damaging crops now and it could get worse. And low density areas in yellow is where you have low risk of locust attacks. That means little or no damage is being caused now. The threat of locust is very high in northern and some central counties. Samburu is at very high risk. Trukana, Marsabit, Isiolo and Laikipia are at high risk. Swarms of locusts have also been spotted in Baringo, West Pokot, and Wasingishu. These counties are also at risk of having locusts. 
Mandera, Wajir, Garissa, Tana River, Kilifi, Kwale and Taita Taveta probably have many more locusts that have not been reported. The desert locusts are like a fire. You as an individual farmer cannot control them alone. However, the government has planes which they can fly over high risk areas and spray the locusts with chemicals that will get rid of them. It is very important that you get in touch with the hotline to tell us whether you have or have not seen locusts in your area. That's right. We also want to know if you have not seen any locusts. Tell us if you have seen the black hoppers, the red immature locusts, or the yellow mature locusts. Here's what to do. Send the word locust to 21606 and we will get in touch with you. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are in Bungoma and we are visiting farmer Bishop Nelson. We have seen how to increase profits from orange flesh sweet potatoes by good harvesting practices. And how to increase milk yield. But we also want to find out about planting trees. And what to do if a major disaster strikes. And so, with no time to waste. Tony, let's get to work. Let's get to work. Time I went to meet our next expert, Samuel Muema from AgriFall. There's something very special he needs to help with on the farm. Now, we told you, Bishop Nelson has a lot of energy. He's helping his son build his house while he is away in the military. But the building work has stopped. Let us find out why. At this stage, uh, actually, I need to get timber. Uh -huh. To do the ring beam uh -huh. and do the roofing. Wow. Yes, sir. And you look a bit worried about that. I'm much worried. Timber is expensive. Very expensive, very expensive. Uh -huh. Well, you're in luck because we have an expert in forestry, oh. commercial forestry, right. Sami. Now, what kind of trees would you like to plant? I would like to plant eucalyptus trees because they're very good for timber, both commercial and domestic use. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's a good uh, objective. For your land, we recommend eucalyptus grandis, mm -hmm. which is fast growing, mm -hmm. high yielding, and uh, in a short span of time, about eight to ten years, mm -hmm. you'll have your timber, mm -hmm. and uh, then you are, you are able to get your house roofed. Well, that's good news. But can Bishop Nelson grow eucalyptus trees successfully in this area? One of the things that you need to look is at the soil depth, mm -hmm. because you need about one to one and a half meters mm -hmm. of depth. And that is why we have this soil auger, okay. we, we, which we use to test the soil depth. And also you, want, you need to get your attitude right, that is meters above sea level. Mm -hmm. For eucalyptus grandis, 1400 meters above sea level. Mm -hmm. You need also to understand your rainfalls mm -hmm. per year. On average, for eucalyptus grandis, your area is okay because you have about 800 millimeters per year. So that will be okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Nelson, where are you planning to plant your trees? I want to plant trees uh, next to my crop here. Is that advisable? Uh, for eucalyptuses, we do not recommend them to be grown next to the crops. Mm. It would be ideal if you have a land where you are not doing crops, mm -hmm. where you put the eucalyptus grandis trees. So, Bishop Nelson took us to a field nearby with no crops and plenty of space. But the first step is to test the soil to see if it's deep enough for the tree roots. It needs to be at least one and a half meters, the length of this auger. Time to start drilling. Well, it's definitely deep enough. The auger is fully drilled into the ground. So the next step is to plan the spacing. To ensure the trees grow with a thick trunk, they should be planted in straight rows, 2.5 meters apart. Don't mix species or plant seedlings among older trees. Keep trees of the same age together. For each seedling, dig a hole 45 centimeters deep and 45 centimeters wide, making sure you keep the topsoil separate. Now, time for planting. You begin with the, with the topsoil. Mm -hmm. You return all of it, then the rest. The reason why you are doing the topsoil first yes. is because it, it's the one that has nutrients mm -hmm. and that is where the, the tree starts feeding from. Mm. Yeah. You don't use fertilizer because I just see you returning the soil. When planting you don't use fertilizer. Mm -hmm. 
because if you mishandle the fertilizer, it might scorch the seedlings. Okay. But you use the fertilizer after a month. Yeah, after now returning the soil, mm -hmm. you can use a panga mm -hmm. yes. uh, to scoop some soil mm -hmm. in the middle of the hole, just enough for the seedling. Mm -hmm. And then you take the seedlings. Mm -hmm. Normally, it should be of what we call the 2 1 ratio. Uh, the size of the container, you should have the seedling in two, twice the, mm -hmm. the height. Mm -hmm. That is a good quality seedling. The 2 to 1 ratio ensures that the seedling is neither too tender nor too old. This way, the seedling will adapt well to the soil when planted and grow to be strong and healthy. And then you get your seedlings at the middle of the hole. And then you return the soil like that. And then you farm lightly as you straighten the seedling mm -hmm. with your ends like that. Good. In case it has not rained, you can uh, put some about half a liter to one liter of water. It is actually recommended to do planting when it rains. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And a farmer can plant as many trees as he can. As he can. Then after eight years, you have a sudden uh, love all the way to the bank. The coronavirus is spread when you come into contact with sneezing or coughing droplets from an infected person. People above the age of 60, as well as people with weak immune systems or illnesses such as diabetes, heart disease or HIV are at higher risk of suffering severely from the disease. But make no mistake, young people can also be infected and spread the virus too. We all need to be very careful not to get infected by the virus. Good social behavior can stop the virus from spreading. Stay at home and avoid places with many people. Generally, keep two meter distance from other people, do not shake hands or embrace, avoid close contact with people who are sick. Elderly people should stay at home. You can support elderly family members or neighbors by bringing them groceries or medication to their door. If you have traveled, quarantine yourself. That means stay at home for 14 days with no or little contact with others. If you have symptoms such as fever, cough, or shortness of breath, Call your doctor or a hospital to seek further advice. Personal good behavior can reduce your risk of getting infected. Do the following. 1. Wash your hands properly with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, at least 10 times a day. 2. Avoid touching your face. 3. If you have no tissue, sneeze or cough into your elbow and not your hand. 4. Wash and iron used handkerchiefs regularly. 5. Clean and disinfect surfaces such as your phone, tables, light switches and doorknobs daily. 6. When using money, avoid using cash. Use mobile money or bank cards as much as possible. And 7. Boost your immune system by eating fruits and vegetables several times a day. Together and with good behavior, we can prevent the virus from spreading. Well, what do you think of that, Carol? Quite educative. Well, let's get back to work. Let's go. <laughs> Our final expert is Joseph Shege, an insurance specialist. He's come to tell our farmer how he can avoid losses from an unexpected disaster. You own a car? Yeah, I do. What if, for some reason, mm -hmm. God forbid, that something bad happens to your car? Maybe it gets involved in an accident mm -hmm. or it's stolen. What will you do? Uh, I have an insurance. You have an insurance? Yeah, I do. But in case of something happen, mm -hmm. then they, I can be compensated. I love that word, compensation. Compensation means you're going to get your money back or you're going to get your car back? Yes, yes. Yeah. That's what I know. Uh -huh. Yeah. What will you do if something mm -hmm. happened to you, sweet potatoes, the ones you love so much, they're close to your heart, you depend on them so much, mm -hmm. and then maybe the rains come, too much rain, floods. Or the opposite, drought and you can't like harvest anything and you suffer loss. What are you going to do? Uh, you mean you can insure crops? We have crop insurance and uh, I like the perception you have about insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, now that you have insured your car, yes. you have an insurance product for crops. Because anything can happen, you, you, you never know what can happen tomorrow mm -hmm. when you're driving. Mm -hmm. Same case applies to our farming activities. Mm -hmm. You know, like now we are experiencing challenges like uh, outbreak of uh, locusts, mm -hmm. fall armyworm, you know, this can happen. Yeah, should that happen and cause uh, damage to your crop, 
uh, you'll, you'll get a compensation. So having an insurance product is very important. When you talk about insurance, is it only crops that get insured or you can also insure your livestock? All these are businesses are covered. To get insurance, follow these simple steps. First, ask an insurance representative to your farm to assess the value of your crops or livestock. Next, the insurance company will quote you a cost. Then, if you agree, you fill out the paperwork, pay the fee, and that's it. You are insured. But how can Nelson trust that if there is a disaster, he'll be compensated? Well, we have a surprise. A farmer who himself had to make a claim. Tony, are you ready? Sure, here I am. Surprise! Edward! Hello, Edward. I'll see you guys later. Hello, hello. All right. Hello. So, Edward, I understand you're a coffee farmer. I am. All right. Mm -hmm. And you've been practicing it for a long time? From my youth. From your youth. Because my father had it. Uh -huh. I just inherited it from him. Wow, that's a good thing. So that's your life, it's basically. Life. Ah, so I understand something happened two years ago? Early last year, that was 2019, mm -hmm. I insured my coffee. And then there was a prolonged drought. So we did not harvest it properly. After the drought had gone, mm -hmm. they got a report that uh, there are some compensation in insurance. So they brought the forms, mm -hmm. I filled. Mm -hmm. So some assured it was uh, 30,000. Mm -hmm. And did you get it? I got it. Fully? Fully. Because it assisted me. Uh -huh. Instead of getting all that I was getting from coffee, it dropped. But because of the compensation, I was put back to the normal pace got of got back into production. That's the advantage. Right. Edward insured his coffee based on the cost of production for his coffee crop. The cover, or sum that Edward insured, was 90,000 shillings for three acres of coffee. The amount of yield that he actually lost when it came to harvest was about one acre, or one third, of his coffee. Therefore, the claim paid to Edward at the end of the season was 30,000 shillings. That is one third of his insured production cost. So, so that's why you can't quit. Uh, I, I can't quit. And I, I can't quit. That's and I'm in the process of encouraging people. And so you'll do it again and again? It gives I'm, you peace I'm, of mind? I'm going to do it. Wow. Because weather changes is very common now. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen. Uh, I'll be encouraged by what you have said and putting together with the... Uh, what my friend has said, and Thank I you. think that insurance is good. All right. And I'm um, so encouraged to that. That is very nice. Mm -hmm. Insurance is reliable. Yes. Insurance works. Always find a reputable agent. All right? To find an approved insurance company near you, contact iShamba. Send the word JOIN to 21606. <laughs> So Bishop, it has been wonderful being in your shamba. I'm going to make sure that everything is alright and I'll be able because now I'll be having money right. in my pocket. Carol, our work here is done. And so, we'll see you in the next shamba. shamba.